Hello, everyone, and welcome to World Across Now. I'm Daryl Seibel. It's my great pleasure to welcome today the Chief Executive Officer of World Across, Jim Shear. Jim, thanks for being with us today. Hey, Daryl, how are you doing? Glad to be here. Jim, throughout your career in athletic administration, you have been a leading voice in the fight against doping in sport. You've been a leader in making certain playing fields are level and the health and well-being of athletes is protected at every turn. Talk about why this has been so important to you, the fight against doping in sport. Um, you know, the heart and soul of the Olympic movement is about um, you know, respect for your opponents, fair play, excellence, None of those things are possible if you're cheating. You don't respect your opponent if you're cheating. Obviously, it's not fair play. Uh, you're gaining an advantage against the field. And it's not true excellence. You're, you're cheating yourself, you're cheating the field, and you're cheating the world with your Olympic performance. And as an Olympian, that was especially meaningful to me. Uh, when I was competing as an athlete, I didn't really uh, pay much attention to it. I think I was pretty naive. But as I started... Uh, my career as an administrator in Olympic sport and hearing the stories of other athletes who just weren't able to excel in their sport because the rest of the field or a large portion of the field uh, were cheating or enough athletes were cheating that um, they couldn't um, earn rightfully what they had worked for. And, and that really became something that stuck with me and throughout my career as a, as a sports administrator I've tried to do what I could to help level the playing field. A number of notable things happened during your tenure, during your leadership of the U.S. Olympic Committee. One of those was the creation of an independent external agency to manage all aspects of testing for America's Olympic and Paralympic athletes. That agency is the United States Anti-Doping Agency. Why is independence so important as a concept in a successful anti-doping program? The first reason we needed had to set up USADA as an independent entity was so that um, the world viewed um, the U.S. Olympic uh, Committee and its athletes as clean, because we knew the vast overwhelming majority of our athletes were clean, but they, they were viewed as, uh, in many cases, not clean, because our anti-doping agency was part of the U.S. Olympic Committee structure, and yep. people didn't view that as, as being um, something that they could trust. Uh, and have confidence in that we were actually policing our own athletes. Second, it did remove all impediments to any bias that might exist by the U.S. Olympic Committee managing uh, its own anti-doping agency. And it, it also removed a lot of the burden that our uh, national governing bodies had as, um, as they were adjudicating and or providing their own testing programs in many cases. And it's just something that <laughs> if, you're, if you're working day to day to, to develop athletes, build a pipeline and, and support your lead athletes, you're not an expert in anti-doping. And so we removed that from the governing bodies. And then third, it was an incredibly effective um, deterrent to doping under Terry Madden's leadership and, and now Travis Taggart. It, it's, a, it's a great example uh, of a national anti-doping agency that is, is um, a very, very good um, both um, deterrent and educator in, in anti-doping. Jim, we're conducting this interview today to help celebrate the World Anti-Doping Agency's Play True Day. And that day this year is April 9th. The purpose of Play True Day is to raise awareness among athletes, the sporting public, and others about the importance of protecting clean sport and clean competition. And the theme of this year's Play True Day is what does play true mean to you? So we pose that question to you. Well, I think it's exactly in line with the Olympic movement ideals. You, know, you compete as, as hard as you, as you possibly can compete to win, but you compete fairly with fair play within the rules and respect for your opponents. And if you don't do that, uh, not only are you cheating the rest of the field, but you're, you're cheating uh, the public, and you're cheating most most importantly the other athletes. And a lot of times, uh, and we've seen it many many times, where athletes um, you know succeeded on on the playing field. Years later, they either confessed or were caught, um, and the, the monetary gains or the the fame or, or winning a few medals really wasn't worth it for them because it it damages you you personally. And and I think. 
uh, that's a good example for athletes that, you know, it, it isn't playing fairly and it will catch up to you and it will, it will damage you personally, it will damage your family, your friends, your country. I know one of the most difficult things for you as a sport administrator has been those occasions where an athlete has finished fourth in the Olympic Games or a, a national championship. And as you just referenced, only years later to be elevated to a position of third or second because of retroactive or retrospective rather testing. Oh, well, that, that medal ceremony where you hand an athlete a medal in, you know, in a business office versus in front of the, uh, on the podium in front of the stands who witnessed the competition it's just a pale comparison to, to what it would have been um, had the field been clean. And, and you know, that's one of the, the really unfortunate impacts of, of doping is when athletes get cheated and they get cheated out of their moment. You've recently been named to a very important committee within the World Anti-Doping Agency. And I know that meant a lot to you, that appointment. Talk about that appointment and, and, and why contributing to the important work that WADA is doing is so important to you. Well, it'll be a small contribution, but I've been named to the WADA Finance and Governance Committee, and it's a small way for me uh, to help where I can with my background in sport and, and business. Um, and I look forward to, to serving on that committee and helping WADA in its efforts to uh, to provide a deterrent and an, as an education to, to uh, ensure clean sport. As, as world lacrosse continues to grow and as the profile of the world championships that are conducted under the umbrella of world lacrosse continue to grow, uh, anti-doping and drug testing will become a bigger, bigger, a bigger and bigger part of the experience for athletes at world lacrosse events. That's a positive. That's a, that's an important step forward for the sport. What's your message to the lacrosse community as this fantastic game continues to grow and, and, and attains a much higher profile internationally? Well, we haven't had any positive tests since I've been here and, and we don't want any positive tests. So it's, it's, it's really a simple one to, to the athletes and the teams and, and those who surround the athletes is continue to play true. Stay true to yourself, stay true to your sport, uh, and play clean. A simple message, but as you rightly point out, an important one. Jim, thanks for your leadership in the fight against doping in sport. As an athlete, there's probably nobody better qualified to really understand the importance of a level playing field and protecting the health and well-being of athletes. So thank you for your leadership in this important area, and thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Darrell. Appreciate it. Thank you.